So this is my first post here, and I'd figured I'd share the most recent thing to happen to me. I just moved not too long ago to a house on the other side of the city. I was barely even settled in when this happened. One of the first things I took care of was to get my home security up and running. I'm a very cautious person. Because of things that have happened in the past and I don't feel comfortable without cameras and motion detectors. It was the second day in this house, as in actually living here with everything set up. I was at the desk working on my newest Unreal Engine project when I glanced at the monitor for my cameras, which showed a man standing in the street in front of my house. He was by my mailbox and I watched for a minute as he would reach towards my box then stop like he was hesitating and looked up at my house. I found it odd and decided to go and see what was going on. I wasn't too concerned as I own a 45 and had it with me. But by the time I got out there, which wasn't very long, the guy was gone. He'd already crossed the street to the next block and was walking away pretty quickly. I didn't think too much of it. I really figured he had the wrong house or something. Simple like that. I checked the mailbox just because of him being right there and it was still empty. I'd very briefly entertained the notion that he'd place something inside, maybe something grisly or frightening, but that was probably a result of me reading too much Stephen King. It didn't take long for me to forget about the incident entirely and bury myself into my computer. Hours passed and before I knew it, midnight had come and gone. I decided it was time to go relax and went to lay on the couch and watch some TV. About 20 minutes later, I started hearing noises from outside and the motion detectors hadn't triggered so I went back to my show. I looked up just a while later and saw a man looking through my window, staring at me. I yelled what the fuck and jumped up off the couch, grabbing my 45 off the table. He wasn't in the window anymore, so I went outside to the side of my house and didn't see him. I checked my entire property. The man was gone. Camera showed that he'd run into the backyard and hop my fence to the alley. He was pretty fast about it too. I realized it was a man from earlier and wondered what the hell was going on. I debated filing police report but decided not to. I haven't had a wonderful experience in the past with law enforcement and tend to avoid that if at all possible. I did note at time that none of my motion censored had triggered when this happened and figured they were probably not set up right. I didn't want to check them as it was early in the morning and dark, so I planned to do it later in the day. I soon found that I'd been wrong. I ended up dozing off on the couch and woke up to the sensor alarm going off. I'm not a heavy sleeper and it didn't take me long at all to respond. All in all, it was probably just a few seconds before I got outside. It was, of course, this man again. He was running down the street in the same direction as the first time. I found something quite bothersome on the footage. The man hadn't even triggered the motion alarms. He'd been at my window looking in for several minutes already by the time the alarm went off, apparently watching me sleep. The alarm was triggered on the side of my house by my neighbor's dog of all things. To this day, I don't have any answers. A neighbor of mine saw the footage and thought it was the son of the house's former resident, who has known to be pretty unstable and disturbed. I did file a police report and of course nothing ever came of it. They didn't really even waste much time or energy looking into it. I have no idea how he avoided triggering the motion sensors or what he wanted from me. I do keep my windows closed and curtains drawn now. You never know who's watching. Shortly after I graduated, a new shop opened up in the downtown area of my hometown. They sold secondhand antique geeky items and I would frequent this place so much it had became a regular thing and the owners would recognize me. It was a small one room store with tables set up having everything from old dime comments to action figures. Every once in a while you could find something really cool and that's how I got into collecting. Time passed I moved out of town and out of state, but every time I would come back to visit family 
I would make sure to stop back to that store, say hello, catch up with the owners, and get at least one thing. After a few visits, I noticed one of the owners was gone. I walk up to the remaining owner, a large man with a long mullet, beard and overabundance of Hawaiian shirts, and asked him what happened to the other guy. He told me to sit down. I can't remember word for word the exact story, but I can at least recall the major beats, and it went something like this. The other owner, who we will call Mike, was a horrible business owner and even a worse person. He catcalled any woman that would enter the store or make them uncomfortable and made racist comments at any person of color. I being of Hispanic descent, I was told he even made comments about me behind my back. But the worst of all is that he kicked out Jews from the store because he didn't want their business. He effectively made the store a Pereira in the community. Nobody wanted to shop there and I didn't even know any of this was going on. With the business not making any money, he quickly got it into debt with the wrong people. A group of bikers came into the store one day with bats, threatening to tear the shop apart if they weren't paid what was due. The other shop owner, let's call him Lance, had no idea how bad the situation really was and soon found out that there was absolutely no money. Mike drank and gambled the rest away and now owed everyone. So Lance got to work and used his own money to start paying back what was due. Things were fine until one day Lance was doing inventory and found boxes of child porn in the back of the store. It had gone far enough and he called the police. Only thing was that Mike must have known about the call because he tried to skip town to Florida, but was arrested along the way and brought back and promptly put in prison. Lance sank his life to save that store and with Mike gone, went to Lentz to get back in good name, which worked for a while, until the store was forced to close. I have no idea what happened to Lance. I hope he's okay and didn't fall on hard times. As far as Mike is concerned, I hope he rots and for his sake, let's not meet again. I was about 10 at the time this happened. I'm a 23 female now, and even after 13 years, I feel so gross and uneasy thinking about it. My mother bought me Heelys when they had come out, and I had practiced day and night to skate with them, so I could do it in public without looking silly. I remember I mastered it and was always so happy to skate around Walmart, getting stuff for my mom and then bringing it back to the cart. While she did her shopping a couple aisles down, it made the trips go faster and I enjoyed helping. My mother had a habit of going to Walmart after 12 a.m. though, because she didn't like lines and people. It was always so much more carefree feeling during that time, so I didn't care. I enjoyed being out of the house. This was all very common. I say all this because it was another 1 a.m. trip to Walmart for me and my mom, and since it was so common and so empty, she wasn't at all concerned to watch me or where I went. She knew either I'd find her or, worst case, she'd find me in the video game section. So I'm skating around just looking at stuff in different aisles when an employee in the dishes section told me to stop skating in the store. He was a short and chubby older guy. I wasn't one to argue, and I got told that often, so I said okay and walked into another aisle and then skated into the frozen meat section rolling my eyes. I remember thinking how stupid it was for the employees to be upset when I had bought the Heelys in their store. When I heard some guy behind me yell, hey, I figured it at first my mother had just turned the corner at the far end of the long aisle and I was focused on catching up. This guy yells, hey, you kid. I stopped immediately and turned around. This time, it wasn't the heavyset older guy. It was a younger, skinny guy. Maybe in his mid-30s, he had short, greasy black hair and some facial hair as well. He was storming up to me, and immediately my stomach started sinking. Something about him just fell off. Looking back now, he looked like a tweaker. His right eye twitched slightly a few times, and even though he was looking at me, he wasn't looking me in the eye at all. His hand twitched a couple times too, coming up to me, and his face was slightly turned down instead of straight. 
I expected him to lecture me on skating, and at first he did. You shouldn't be skating in the store, he said. He didn't yell it, but it was very forceful in a lowered voice. Sorry, I replied. I started backing up because this guy just kept advancing, though, until I was backed up against one of those low coolers that are in the middle of the Walmart aisles. He walked right up to me, literally was on top of me. His whole body was just a couple inches from mine. I got scared and I remember feeling so sick. I remember panicking and hoping my mom turned around. I honestly don't know why I didn't yell for her. I was so scared to be loud at all with him so close. He put his hands on either side of me on the cooler and then still leans in like he's trying to kiss me. I immediately looked away so his mouth ends up just a couple inches from my ear instead. And he starts quietly talking to me while shifting his weight between feet. It was like he couldn't stand still or like he was trying to decide if he could get even closer. Why are you skating in here? You know that's bad, right? You're going to get in trouble. All while saying this, the fucking creep is waving his head back and forth like he's still trying to get an angle to kiss me. I just kept abruptly turning my head and looking at the floor. He continues, You should be a good girl. Can you be a good girl for me? Stop skating around here like that. Yeah, sorry. I mumbled, trying to shrink away. He kept talking for a minute or two, and I just tuned him out and kept repeating, Yeah, just willing him to quit having made his point. He then raises one hand like he's going to cut my face. But before he could, he stops and his head snaps up. He looks off at the something behind him and then drops his hand and backs away. He backed up until he was between two side aisles and I quickly bolted down the aisle. I could feel him watching me as I went, but I never looked back. When I got to the end of the aisle, my mother wasn't there, but an older lady was and she had been coming up the aisle towards me. I ran past her until I found my mom three aisles away. I never told my mom what happened, but I stayed by her the whole rest of the time. I felt disgusted and scared and was internally freaking out. But I still didn't tell her. I don't know if maybe I thought I'd get in trouble or what honestly, but I was looking over my shoulder the rest of the time trying to spot him. I never saw him again, not that time or any other time. But I never felt comfortable being on that side of the store by myself again. I will say in a weird twist, it did not deter me from skating in Walmart though. So creepy pedophile Walmart employee, I hope we never meet again and you get some fucking help. So, I saw the craziest thing yesterday while me and my mother were both in our car. I was in the passenger seat and she was driving. We drove past a bus stop that was near my apartment. A lot of locals go there to take the bus, but the weird thing was this man who stood out amongst them. He was wearing all black. He was wearing this long black trench coat and he also had sunglasses on. The weirdest thing about this man was his necklace. I don't know how to explain it, but his necklace just confused me. It had a hammer on it, and I think the letter W behind the hammer. Or behind the hammer had this zigzag design. He just looked so suspicious and out of place. Also, considering the weather, yeah, it was kind of cold outside, but not enough to wear a full trench coat. I don't know how to describe him. He just looked really creepy and out of place. Like he just didn't belong there at all. 